a penny for those thoughts. Looks very pensive there, doesn't he? Very thoughtful. Well, guys, I think there really is no smoke without fire. And there certainly seems to be stories coming out of Glasgow and coming out of Scotland tonight that certainly pour fire, oh no, pour petrol on the flames that seem to spark ever higher around Michael Beale's future at Rangers. Well, it certainly should be a very interesting press conference when he speaks to the media this week. I think it's Friday he will speak to the media. There will be some very interesting questions indeed, no doubt asked as regards the pressure on him and his position at the club and also the rumours surrounding uh, Graham Potter. There is more news and stories surrounding Graham Potter, the former Brighton and Chelsea manager today. Now, we know that Graham Potter was approached by Olympic Lyonnais to take over there and he turned that job down. Now, according to stories coming out of um, Potter's camp, he is looking for a return to the Champions League, having been bitten by the Champions League bug um, as Chelsea manager. Um, it is reported in a number of media sources today and yesterday that Graham Potter was, in fact, approached by the Ibra board, according to an insider. However, it is reported that he rejected the chance to become Rangers manager, which therefore preserved Michael Beale's job. Now, this is this is interesting news, if nothing else. Now, I know, like I've always said on these videos, you have to take whatever the media write with a pinch of salt. And when it comes to a massive worldwide club like Rangers, they will always write stuff about us that is going to cause more clickbait, that is going to cause more interest and more attention from our fans who are hungry, nay thirsty for news about our club. Now, like I said, according to reports in the media, um, and also reported on Rangers' websites as well, Potter was approached by the Ibrox board with a view to taking over from Michael Beale, but he rejected the opportunity to do so. Um, that is a report that is reported on in The Sun and a number of English newspapers. Uh, Potter apparently wants the right job and is in no rush at this moment in time to return to management, um, it is reported. The paper wrote that Graham Potter has turned down a return to management Scottish side Rangers after being approached to replace under fire Michael Beale. Rangers have lost two of their first four Premiership games, including the Old Firm Derby, and were knocked out of the Champions League qualifiers thanks to a 5-1 second leg thumping by PSV Eindhoven. That led Rangers bosses to explore their options and approach to Potter's representatives was made. However, the former Chelsea and Brighton boss was not interested in even discussing the job. So interesting that Potter did not even want to consider coming north of the border to manage Rangers. Like I said, I think it is very much that he is waiting for either a Champions League uh, club or a Premier League club for his return to management. And like I said, he is in no rush at this moment in time to take a manager's job. But like I said, there is no smoke without fire. Um, in ter terms of the managerial links, there was links made to Kevin Muscat, there was links made to Graham Potter, to Chris Wilder, to Kevin, to um, Gary McInnes, um, even David Martindale, I think it was rumoured at one point. But the only name that was really shot down immediately by the Ibrox board was Kevin Muscat. No response was ever given to the opportunity that, to the Graham Potter link, to the Chris Wilder link, or even to the link to Derek McInnes. Now, it seems to me that, like I said, there is literally no smoke without fire. Now, this leaves uh, Rangers board in a very difficult position. If it is a case that they have gone behind Michael Beale's back and approach Potter with the opportunity, with the view to taking over. Um, this would not be the first time Rangers have done this, obviously, you know, with a situation where Gio Van Bronckhurst, while still manager, uh, managing the team on the sideline, Michael Beale was sat in at the director's box watching on and then reportedly telling the Rangers board that he could do so much better. So go the reports. So it's not like Beale can, I think, complain too much. He's done this himself. Um, but it is fascinating, isn't it, that if this story is indeed true, that there would have been a change of manager had Potter accepted the job. Look, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this, how I feel about Graham Potter, how I feel about him becoming Rangers manager. It certainly seems the board wanted to act and wanted to bring in someone new. 
um, under the new vision. We're unimpressed with what Bigelet had to do. But is four league games too soon? Or is it, are we judging him on a whole body of work? And certainly, you know, the fact that he has failed to beat Celtic in any old firm game that had anything riding on it is um, a cause for concern. But uh, Potter, is he the best candidate? You know, he had a pretty shocking time at Chelsea and Brighton, he did a good job. Swansea, he did a good job. But is that the sum, some total of Rangers' ambitions? At the end of the day, I think, you know, if it is genuinely that he was approached and he didn't even want to discuss it, then, you know what, that we don't want him. We don't want someone who doesn't want to be here. We want someone who wants this job, who wants to be part of this club. You know, Rangers are a very special club. They are a club that matters a lot to a lot of people. And at the end of the day, if you don't want to be here, then we don't want you here. And I think that is kind of the message we've got to take from this. Whatever the case now, whatever our thoughts are on Michael Beale, and I'm sure we all have those thoughts. And we've all been, I think, with, with, it, with the odd exception of, I don't know, people who perhaps weren't watching the team properly, been very disappointed with the, ga the games we've seen so far. They have been exceptionally poor. Michael Beale does need a rapid change of fortune and does need a performance, not just a victory, but a performance against St Johnston on Saturday. A failure to deliver a united, coherent performance with a clear vision and a clear style and a clear formation for me, could spell a dead start, the death knell and the dead man walking um, towards an inevitable sacking that could come up. You know, Beal goes into those games on that game on Saturday, but not just that, the Betis game during the week with a hell of a lot of questions hanging over him. A situation where realistically he has to come up with some solutions to some problems that we are currently facing I mean, one of the biggest problems that Michael Beale currently faces for me is how does he get this front three that he has spent so much money on firing? You know, three million. Well, look, depends who you believe. Look, let's let's take it as what's been reported: three million for Lammers, four and a half million for Dessers. Jesus Christ, they saw him coming with that one, and six million for Denia, which represents some thirteen and a half million pounds worth of business. Look, in, in, in global European terms, 13 and a half million is not money. In Premier League terms, English Premier League, it is not a lot of money. You would struggle to get one cent forward for 13 and a half million set to the border. So we've got to sort of kind of think of it that. But in terms of these three players in the Scottish Premier League, we need to see them start firing on all cylinders. We need to see them actually start to form a unified uh, triumvirate to attack the opposition and to score goals. I think... You know, it's a little unfair, the criticism the Neo has had so far. He really hasn't had a lot of game time, or a lot of starting game time. I think he's only started two games. Yes, he missed that sitter against Servette, and he missed a chance against PSV Eindhoven. And he certainly seems to have come in for a hell of a lot of criticism for the two misses that he's received. Yet Cyril Dessers, who's missed arguably more presentable chances, those three against Ross County and that one against PSV, seems to be defended by part of the fan base, whereas they are ready, ready to criticise Denia, which I don't understand. Um, the whole three of them really have been exceptionally disappointing so far uh, in terms of their goals return this season. You know, you look at what they've achieved in the uh, Scottish Premier League and overall, you know, in terms of goals. Um, you know, this season, you look at Denio, you look at his stats, uh, how he's performed um, in his limited opportunities. And that's one thing I think, you know, it, it is very unfair to criticise him on because of the fact that he has so, had such limited opportunities. He scored twice, once in the Scottish Premiership and once in the Scottish League Cup. Um, so at least he scored in the league. You look at uh, Stan Malamas, who at times has really been disappointing, missed that chance against Celtic that he really should have taken. And, uh, you know, you look at his stats this season, um, he has scored only one goal that coming in the Scottish Premiership, no goals in the Champions League, no goals in the League Cup. You then move, obviously, to Cyril Dessers, who scored two goals, one in the Champions League that basically bounced in off him, that required no skill, and a penalty that's, that, you know, like I said, that he got the opportunity to take because Tavernier... Uh, was not there. So, at the end of the day, this this forward line have returned, what, five goals between them? Uh, Antonio Cholak had scored more goals by this point in, in his first season. So, Michael Beale needs to get a tune out of these three strikers. If he fails to do so, it really will, you know, lead to his departure from the club. These three guys are very dependent. Now, what is a worry and a concern 
over two thirds of this of this triumvirate is number is over Dessas and Lammers. It is a number of years since they last hit double figures in any of their league seasons. Um, Lammers, you know, you've got to go back to his time in Holland was the last time he scored uh, double figures. Um, you know, he which is very worrying. I don't think Lammers though is an out and out goal scorer. He's more that creative influence that. Um, player who creates chances and may be better used in that number 10 role. Now, the last time Lammers scored double figures was in 2018-2019, which is four years ago, where he scored 16 goals for Heronvane whilst on loan there um, in total that season. Um, so, you know, he, in total that season, he got 19 in 35. That's the last time he hit double figures, which is a very worrying statistic. You know, you turn in turn to Cyril Dessers, who, yes, I admit is, a, I think, a decent foil for people, but definitely not an out-and-out -out striker, not someone who's going to score you a lot of goals. Um, you know, I don't think he's really a player you can play as a lone out-and-out -out striker. You know, you look at his rec his record, uh, the last time he had a double-figured season was with final in 2021-22. So you're looking at, you know, at least two seasons ago, before he had those, and the majority of those goals came in the Conference League. The last time he scored double figures in a league season was 2019-2020 with Heracles Alamo, which was in the Dutch Eredivisie. Uh, that's the last time he got double figures. Before that, you've got to go back to 2016-2017, where he was in the second division with Nac Breda. So, you know, Dessers has gone, I think, four or five years without a double figure, double figure goal season um, in a league campaign, which is worrying indeed. Um, you know, Michael Beale does need to get something from these guys. He does need to get them scoring again. He does need to get them, I think, working together. You know, if it is truly that these guys are what we were saying is going to be our future, as going to be our our players to score our goals for us and, and be the mat, be the, the men who you know lead this team to 56. It is really a case that we do need, um, you know, we do need them to start scoring goals and start scoring goals soon. And that is down to the manager and down to them to him to get a tune out of them and get them back to where he thought they were when he signed them. You know, in terms of De Neo, for example, um, you know, he scored. Uh, double figures last season for Feyenoord, getting uh, 10 goals in the Eredivisie, 14 overall. In fact, uh, the last two seasons with Feyenoord, he has hit double figures. He certainly has a better record than the other two. So for me, you know, I really do think that there is a need for us to start the Neo against St. Johnston. He must start, whether that is with Dessas or with Lammers or whether all three of them start, which I think would be very unfair on, um, on Kamar Roof. Another thing that Michael Beale needs to consider is how he gets the best out of Tom Lawrence. Now that Tom Lawrence is back, he's figuring for the team. You know, Michael Beale spoke before the international break how Tom would be ready to start games um, for Rangers once the international break was over. So how does he do that? Where is his best position? How does he use Tom Lawrence? Tom is a very exciting attacking midfield talent. He's someone who takes shots from outside the outside the, the goal. He's someone who will take an opportunity, something that many of our players don't do. So, you know, where can we use where can we use him? How can he be best used? Um, that's you know that's another issue that uh, that he needs to needs to sort out. Michael Beale has also got another issue to sort out, and that is the defensive issue. You know, the defence really does need some work on it. You know, how do they avoid those calamitous errors at the back that, you know, in many games this season, we have given the opposition a goal. We have not really made them work for it. You know, the Celtic goal, for example, was down to some shocking defending, an awful clearing header by Connor Goldson, John Suter falling asleep playing on Kyogo, Connor Goldson failing to recognise Kyogo who stood behind him, and pretty basically letting Kyogo through for a shot on goal, which... Unfortunately, he is going to take. So that defensive issue is certainly one. Now, moving forward as well, you know, Michael Beale has the left back issue to, to consider. You know, with the news that Ridvan Yilmaz is out of the Europa League group stage and will not be available for any of the Europa League games, whether that's with injury or whether that's because Michael Beale doesn't fancy him, which seems to be the case. What is the long term solution? You know, yes, Bourne has had a decent start for the season, but he's not getting any younger. You know, he's not a player you're going to build a back four around. To be fair, you take three quarters of our back four. They're not going to be there for very much longer. Tavernier is 31, Bourne is in his 30s. God, Connor Goldson's in his 30s. There was only John Suter who was in his 20s there. So Suter is there perhaps for the longer haul. But what do we do in terms of our back four? That is something that Michael Beale needs to address. 
you know, we've got young players there, like the likes of Leon King, the likes of um, Dujon Sterling. How does he incorporate them? How does he bring them in? I would love to see the younger players given an option. You know, as I said on yesterday's video, this young man here, if he's good enough, he's old enough. You've only got to look at uh, Jude Bellingham and how fantastic he is. You know, the lad's not even 20 years old yet. And he is, you know, already tearing apart defences on the international stage and on the club team stage. So, look, if you're good enough, if you're good enough, you're old enough. And I, I really do think Michael Beale has got to, you know, perhaps turn to some of our younger players who are Rangers to the core and help, help him to lead us out of this slump that we are currently in. One player who does deserve praise for, and Bale deserves praise for picking him up is Jack Butland. And I think Jack, but he has Jack Butland to thank for the fact that he's still in a job. I mean, certainly, you know, in terms of the Savet game, he kept us in that game. He kept the score down in the PSV Eindhoven game. He kept the score down in the Celtic game. He, you know, he is a, a, a super talent. I think Bale does deserve some praise for the signing of Jack Butland. Well, guys, whatever happens from now on, we just have to get behind the team. We have to get behind the manager, whether we like him or we don't like him. This is the situation we are in at the moment. Yes, there is no smoke without fire, but we just need to get behind our lads and back them a million percent, as we always do on a match day, as they take on St Johnston this Saturday. Please smash the sub, come and join the channel, and if you can hit the like for this video, that's one of the things I always need you to do. The second is, remember, we are...